Hey guys, today we are taking a look at easily my most anticipated Marvel Legends in recent history, probably since Shatterstar came out around this time last year. Today we're taking a look at, I guess, his counterpart in X-Force. We're taking a look at Cable. This is the classic style Cable from the New Mutants X-Force era of Marvel Comics. Uh, just speaks to me on a very nostalgic level, so I'm very, very happy to finally get this guy to take a look at him. He comes in that standard Marvel Legends box that we're all used to. Uh, we've got the artwork on the side there, and we've got product shots, lineup, build-a-figure, all that good stuff on the back. So let's pull him out and take a closer look. All right, guys, here is our figure out of the packaging. And whether you call this guy Cable, whether you call him Nathan Summers, whether you call him Nathan Dayspring, whether you call him Ascani Sun or the Chosen One, this is a figure that I have been waiting for and just chomping at the bit to get my hands on. If I was hard pressed to say uh, where this figure gets a lot of its inspiration from, this is obviously the classic Cable from the early 90s uh, when Rob Liefeld kind of made his mark with this particular character and X-Force and in the New Mutants. But I believe if, if I had to be hard pressed to say where this particular figure gets a lot of its visual cues from, it's going to be X-Force number seven's cover in particular. This is what you see on that cover. Uh, now, his look is very similar in a lot of other places, but a lot of other times before that issue, he doesn't look exactly like this. Some colors are different. He's got different armor. Just different things, especially in like his first appearance in New Mutants. He doesn't look like this in particular. So that's just, uh, you know, a little thing that I noticed throw it out there. Uh, if you if you agree or disagree, let me know. Uh, but I, I've, I have a lot of history with this character, with X-Force, with all of everything that goes along with Cable and his history. Uh, it was at kind of like my prime time when I was a kid to read comic books is right when he debuted. I was six years old when he came out, and I have been a Cable fan ever since. Well, I was six when he was an adult. He was, he was first revealed in Uncanny X-Men when I was two years old, so we're not going to count that. He was a baby in that issue. But as far as his adult form, this version of Cable, uh, I was six years old, and I have been a longtime fan of this character and of X-Force ever since. And I have, uh, like I said, I've just been dying to get a hold of this figure and to get him in this form. And I think um, this guy is really going to be a contender for my top legend of the year. We'll see what else comes out towards the end of the year. But if uh, Shatterstar was any indication from 2017, 2018's looking very cable for me. So uh, there is a, a lot that is really good here. There is only one thing I think I'm going to point out that is maybe slightly a negative. Um, again, I am pretty biased with this figure. I'm going to throw that out there right out the gate. I have been looking forward to this. Um, I am a huge fan of the character. Its creator is my favorite comic book artist of all time. So I've got a lot of stake in this character just from a personal standpoint. But objectively, this figure is pretty wild. So we're going to do the normal stuff and then we'll talk you know, accessories and all that good stuff. So um, we'll do articulation first because he's, he's pretty normal. If you're going to get a little limitation with because he does have this, uh, you know, the pouches, the, the cable pouches that are that are kind of classic for this character. So the head can swivel. We've got up and down. This piece around his neck is a floating piece. It, it doesn't really get in the way. It moves with you, thankfully. The arms can go. Um, let me pull this gun out of his hand here just to get it out of the way. His arms can go out. They obviously are going to hit the shoulder pads. That's that's unavoidable. And they can, of course, rotate all the way around. But again, they're going to hit everything. So just keep that in mind when you're moving it. Bicep swivel. We've got double jointed elbows. We've got, uh, this is a vertical hinge on this wrist. And it also rotates. And then this hand has a horizontal hinge. Because this is more of a gripping hand for like a stock. Or I guess, no, the butt of a gun. And then he does have an ab crunch. And... Surprisingly, these don't really get in the way, and I'll kind of explain why here in a minute. And pop that other gun out too. So, all of his joints, I should mention, at least on my figure, have been very, very tight. Um, keep that in mind. I don't, and it's not a big deal. It's just something that I've had uh, some just some tightness. I would rather them be too tight when I first get them than too loose. So, and that's a good thing. He does have a waist twist uh, that sits below the the belt line. Legs can go out but not very far that's that's probably one of his big limitations and it's not a huge deal for me personally but obviously it's going to be some for someone legs can kick forward all the way decent on the back but not crazy we do have a thigh cut and they are uh they are hidden pretty well they're right at the seam for the uh the straps on those pouches 
So cables pouches come in handy. So full thigh cut there. We've got double jointed knees. There is of course a boot cut and he's got rocker and hinge at the, at the ankles. So like I said, it's, it's standard Marvel Legends uh, articulation. You're not really missing anything. There's nothing innovative here, but you're getting exactly what you would expect to get from this particular figure. Now, as far as sculpt and paint, this, this is clearly where this figure excels and where it shines because there is a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, I have said time and time again that parts reuse for Marvel Legends is not my forte, so if you want to uh, let me know down below what pieces and parts he has uh, from other figures, I would welcome it just because I don't have everything, so it's hard for me to go back and see what he's got. I believe the hands are the same hands and cuffs that Shatterstar has, so that's a thing. Uh, we've got the pants that are nicely textured, nicely wrinkled. We've got the pouches that are sculpted on there, and then he's got the boots. So it's pretty standard from the waist down. It's from the waist up that is just so cool. He's got his techno-organic arm, which is painted silver, and of course we have the ridges that run through it. He does have the belt and the harness and the shoulder pads, which is classic, classic cable. This piece is actually removable. I'm not going to remove it because there's really no point. Uh, it pegs in back here, and then these straps are connected to the belt piece. So they're not connected at the arms anywhere. They, that's, why they, that's why they more freely move. They're connected down here rather than anywhere up here. They're not tremendously soft, but they aren't incredibly rigid either. So they do move and they flex, and they are very much kind of fluid with his movements, which is great. It helps with his overall articulation. Like I said, this piece around his neck is a free-floating piece. It's got that pouch with the X-Force logo on there and the red bands. We do have the bandolier with all of the shells. They're painted gold. It's got the green paint all over it. We've got the pouches all over him. It's cable, he's, you know, pouches galore. And they have that same kind of faux leather look that we've seen recently, uh, recently on other figures. Uh, Shatterstar is one that usually comes to mind when I think about that. And then, of course, we've got the green, kind of army green uh, straps that go along the back of his shoulder pads. We've got his uh, mouthpiece here, which is sculpted pretty nicely. There's a lot of detail there. And uh, just got some, some gray on it. Nothing too crazy. No real paint to speak of there. His hair is nicely sculpted. I'm very, very happy with that. A lot of texture there, a lot of uh, just kind of flowing hair. It looks to be a separate piece as well, just based on where the hairline meets the head. The, he the head itself is, of course, a huge, huge selling factor for me. We, For one, we have the scarred eye. We've got the, the telekinesis effect that's coming out of his left eye. And just the, the face sculpt in general, I think, is... Probably one of the better faces for a comic book character that we've gotten in a long time. Generally, Hasbro has been on their game with comic character faces, but this one is is a whole other ball game for me. Again, like I said, I am incredibly biased for this particular character, and if anything, that's probably a good thing for Hasbro. I love this character so much, yet I am 100% on board with everything they have done with this particular look and this design. Um, I just think that they have excelled really well with making him into that early 90s original classic cable look. Now, as far as accessories goes, this, this is where my, my one gripe comes in, and it's kind of a, a small combination of a, of a few things. So we can see here that Cable has a open style gripping hand, which cannot hold an accessory, not by the trigger anyway. And we've got a gripping hand with a trigger finger. So he has three guns. He's got kind of a short double barrel shotgun, and he's got this humongous, this is uh, very much out of the comic books, a uh, revolver. They're very techno, very futuristic, very cable. So he can hold either of these just fine with the right hand. This guy in particular can go in his holster here. And it is supposed to go backwards like this. So he can hold that there. So you could have one there, you could have one in his hand. So you can put this one in his hand if you were so inclined. I'm not going to do it now. And then we have this big guy here. So this is very much a cable style gun. They're all molded in the same kind of metallic -y, navy blue plastic. There's no paint on any of them. So that's slightly a negative, but I don't expect that uh, with this line anyway. So you've got a few options. You can have one gun holstered, you can have one gun in his hand, and then this gun. What would you do with it? Well, you can peg it on his back. So that guy goes there. And you could effectively have him holding all of his guns uh, at the same time. My only real gripe comes in the fact that 
I wish they had given him an extra trigger finger hand for this hand. I know he's very much probably the most uh, expensive figure to produce in the line because he's got all of this stuff, but I would really much rather have him holding this gun and this gun than to ha not have this gun in his hand. Because this one, I, this one is so classic cable that I want him to be displayed with it. But it also is another th one of those things where I've got an accessory that if he's holding this, I can't do anything with this one. It has to go somewhere else. It has to go in a bag or something. So, like I said, it's a minor gripe. It's one. Of, it's just one of those nitpicky things I always have to mention because I don't like having a lack of storage for guns. I figure he's got all these pouches and everything. This could have gone somewhere, but it has no home unless it's in uh, his hand. Uh, whereas this guy can be pegged on his back. So you could store them all at the same time, but if you want to display him with the big guy, then this little one's going to go somewhere. Well, I say little, it's still a big gun. And one thing I don't really do a lot with Legends, or most figures in general, honestly, is uh, size comparisons. I, I generally leave that up to other folks who do reviews. Uh, but this one is one, you know, that I wanted to see alongside other figures, and I figure other folks might as well. Because Cable in the comics at the time was so huge that uh, it kind of makes sense that just to see exactly how big he is now. He's not enormous, but he's actually bigger than you might think. So here he is alongside Shatterstar. Just to give you an idea, they're about the same height, but build and kind of bulk-wise, uh, Cable is much larger. This is a this is a shot that I've wanted to, to do for a long time. I've said long long ago that Shatterstar is is my favorite X Force member. Uh, he's one of my favorite Marvel characters of all time. So this does a lot for me on a personal level. So Shatterstar is kind of a a, a bit of a bigger character to begin with. Um, so here you can put him next to his his old man, and you can see that. Uh, Cable is much, much larger than kind of your normal Bucky Cap style figure. There's definitely a lot more plastic going on here. So there's a lot of bulk. And then, uh, finally, here he is with Wolverine. So this is a huge, huge difference in size. Um, I mean, obviously Wolverine's kind of hunched over in his style pose, but I think this is how a lot of people pose him anyway, or some kind of variant of that anyway. That's what Wolverine does. He's always kind of hunched down like that. So this shows you just how big Cable is, and that just goes even more towards just how much Hasbro really nailed the look of this figure for the era that they were going for. So overall, at the end of the day, I think it's 100% obvious that I am completely a fan of this figure. I think they got every aspect of him right. And again, my only real gripe is that the way I want to display him personally, I've got a leftover accessory. That's ultimately it. I would have liked to have had a replacement hand that has a trigger finger on it so I could have him holding two guns at the same time. But I do understand that there is a lot of plastic on this guy. There's a lot of new stuff with those shoulder pads, with that head. Just a lot of new in general with Cable. And at the end of the day, I am 100% satisfied. This is a very, very high contender for the number one legend spot for the year for me. And I would be very surprised if he doesn't end up on my top 10 overall figures. Uh, that's just how much I like the character. And they executed on this guy pretty flawlessly uh, from the paint to the sculpt to the accessories to the overall look and aesthetic of him, he is uh, a winner. So I would urge anybody who is an X-Force fan, an X-Men fan, or especially a Cable fan to get this figure because he uh, definitely deserves a spot in your collection. So that is going to do it for this look at the Marvel Legends Cable figure from Hasbro. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time, guys.